Hey budget gardeners, Vita Loca here. Join me today as we plant up some summer bulbs, corms, and tubers. During the winter months, I stored the corms, tubers, and bulbs in my garage, which stays between 40 and 50 degrees Fahrenheit. I kept them in these cardboard boxes and I just put some paper in there to layer them. And I also added some vermiculite and peat moss that was slightly moist. And I checked on everything about once a month. I missed it in here as needed just to keep some moisture in there. And if anything was rotting, I made sure to discard it right away. So why don't I go ahead and show you a few things that are in this box and then we're gonna go ahead and start planting here. I will admit it's a bit dry in this box. I might not have checked on the tubers as often as I probably should have during the last month, but there is life in here. And these are various begonia tubers. And if you look carefully, you will see that there's some growth going on them, but they really need to be potted up so that they can keep on growing. I'm excited that they are sprouting. Here's another one. Dahlias are very expensive when you buy them in the store. So if you can overwinter them, it really makes sense to do that. And here in zone 5B, they do not overwinter at all in our climate here. And this is a small little tuber, but there is life on that one as well. I do have some very small pieces that I probably divided off. And honestly, they don't look very good. <laughs> but I'm going to probably put all of these in one pot. And we'll see. I know in the past, I might think something doesn't look very good and it sprouts anyway. Same with this guy. I can't see if there are any sprouts on there. But I'm going to pot it up and let's just see what happens. I'm just going to be using regular potting mix that I made and I'm going to be potting all of my tubers, bulbs, and corms into this potting mix. And what's going to happen is the plants are going to grow and they're going to grow roots. They're going to just get bigger, but they are not ready to go in the ground here in New Hampshire. It is still middle of April. It's way too early. I can either keep these in my house, I can keep them in the garage where it's warmer, or I also have a, a couple of greenhouses. And out of my two greenhouses, I am going to set up one greenhouse with a heater that has a thermostat in it. And so the nights that it gets cool, the thermostat will kick on and it'll keep the tender plants in there, which will include dahlias and begonias, plants like that. It'll keep them nice and warm. So I'm going to go ahead and pot these up. And I'm just going to find pots that match their size. So I'm just going to keep checking everything. I don't necessarily want to use a huge pot if I don't have to. And so this pot right here is a good size just to get this started. It'll definitely need to be moved up or potted up at some point. But for the purposes of just getting it to grow on, this little tiny pot is perfectly fine. I'm going to go ahead and add some potting mix in here. And I'm going to fill it up about halfway. And then I'm putting my tuber in here. It might be a corm, it might be a bulb. I think it varies for all the different uh, plants that I'm potting up here. And this potting mix has been pre-moistened. You don't want these to get too wet. You also don't want them to get too dry. If they're too wet, then you're gonna rot what's in there. And if it's too dry, too dry it's gonna die. So you just wanna make sure you're keeping it moist, but just find that happy medium of not too wet or not too dry. All done, that was pretty easy. So in this one pot here, this is the one where I planted the questionable begonias. So I'm, I'll check on those and see if there's any growth and I'll keep you posted if I see any life in any of those. But otherwise we have four here. So I'm pretty happy with that. I don't know the variety. Um, it looks like I did leave tags in here. So when they eventually start blooming, I can then look these up and see which varieties are which. I'm gonna to read to you the, the tags I have in here. It says Begonia picotti, pink and white. Begonia pendula, yellow. So it's one of those two. 
I will keep you posted on the progress of all of these. And now let's see what's in box number two back here. We are now on to box number two. And I will go ahead and just zoom in and show you what we have in this box. And then after that, we will get planting. Okay, this is what I got out of the box. Over here are peacock orchids, and these are the bulblets, and these are the bigger, more mature plants. Over here is one lonely little dahlia, but it is sprouting. Over here is the sweet potato vine. A lot of them don't look very good. This one definitely looks okay, and this one looks okay. I've never overwintered them, so we'll see if they do anything. They're an ornamental sweet potato vine. And this over here, are these are gladiolas. Uh, you can see the bigger gladiolas are here. A few of them are even sprouting. And honestly, when it comes to the gladiolas as well as the peacock orchids, sometimes it's hard to tell the difference. They do look, some of them look very similar. So uh, it's quite possible that they got mixed. And I'm okay with that because once they start sprouting and growing, I will be able to tell the difference. I will know if it's a gladiola or a peacock orchid. Uh, right in the center here, these are all calla lilies. I noticed that they also have some growth on them. And then this is my experiment. These are artichokes. There's some imperial star artichoke as well as globe artichoke. I'm not sure how they're gonna do, but I'm gonna plant them anyway. These over here are just little baby gladiola bulblets. So what I'm planning to do is I'm actually going to plant these in trays. I think that's probably the easiest thing to do is plant them in small trays that have drainage holes in the bottom, let them sprout, and then they can go in their forever home for the summer anyway. For the gladiolas, when you plant them, the flat side goes down. I a lot of times leave, when I cut, when I cut them back in the fall, I like to leave a little bit of the stem. So I know, it, it's pretty obvious with gladiolas, but then I know this is the top. This is the bottom. And when it comes to the planting depth, you can look that up on the internet when you want to plant gladiolas or any of these items. But for the purposes of uh, just sprouting them, you can plant them as deep as you want. They can just barely be under the soil. And I wanted to point out about the peacock orchid, same thing. This is the bottom, this is the top. Same with the calla lilies. Some of the calla lilies, again, I, I left the stalks on, so it's pretty obvious, but if you actually didn't have a stalk on it, then it's a little bit harder to tell. Uh, but a lot of times you just want to look for the growth points and you should, if, if, they're, if they're starting to sprout, you should be able to see it. And um, the artichoke, it's pretty obvious. You can see the roots are on the bottom, so that it's going to get planted like this. All right, let's get these planted. I'm just using restaurant to-go containers. You can really use whatever you want for pre-sprouting. You just want to make sure that you're using something that has drainage holes in the bottom of it. I'm going to add a little bit of my potting soil, just enough. I'm going to put in my peacock orchids facing up. Doesn't matter how far apart they're faced because this is just a temporary place for them so that they can sprout. I'm going to cover them up. And good, done. I have a label. I'm gonna put the label in there so I remember what that is. Okay, on to the next thing. Next, I'm gonna plant the peacock orchid bulblets, the little babies. I just want them to get bigger. So they'll eventually be big enough to bloom. And honestly, when they're this small, there is no right or wrong in terms of which way to face them, or point them, I should say. They literally are teeny tiny, <laughs> little babies. And I'm gonna cover them. Now they're not gonna be in here for a long time. They just need to sprout. And then I can find a place I'm not really sure where I'm going to put them, but I want them to get bigger, so they're going to have to get spaced out enough. I'm not sure how many years it takes for the bulblets to get big enough to bloom, 
but I am patient and I want to make sure I give them a chance. Those are done. I'm going to go ahead and make a tag and label it and then we'll work on the next container. Next up we have the calla lilies. I'm pretty sure I have two colors. I think that they're pink and either white, maybe yellow, I'm not sure. So it'll be a surprise, we'll find out. They were awfully pretty last year though. This might end up having to be placed in two containers, so we will see. I'm just checking them to make sure I'm placing them the right way. There's the bottom, the top. I'm not sure if you can see it. This one even has growth on it. A tight squeeze in there. I just don't like wasting room if I don't need to. I clearly divided these in the fall so if you're following my channel then this fall I will show you how I go about dividing calla lilies, gladiolas, my dahlias, how I go about overwintering them. Uh, let's see. I think we can make it work. <laughs> I literally will have to bump these up in, you know, as soon as they start sprouting. But due to time, due to space, and the fact that I just want to get them sprouted, we are going to do this. If you're interested, leave a comment if you want to watch me pot these up into a bigger container and you want to see what the roots look like and what it looks like when it's sprouting. I'd be happy to make an update video. Just let me know. But I want to encourage you to buy these type of summer bulbs, tubers, corms. Enjoy them and then try to overwinter them, especially in the zones where you can't just leave them outdoors. I'm all about trying to challenge myself, see if I can do it. And what a great feeling when I find out that I can do something. And if I can't do something, it's okay, but I'm not going to give up. I'm going to keep trying. Done. Let's go on to the next thing. One teeny tiny Dahlia tuber. There are some growth points on there, amazingly enough. So I'm going to, I'm going to plant it. And I left some of the stem there, so, plus I can see where the growth points are. So I'm going to plant it like that. Put the tag in, and voila, that one's done. Easy peasy. Next we have the sweet potato vine. This one looks okay, but again, I've never uh, overwintered and grown sweet potato vine like this. I've just bought the plant. So I'm going to try. This one looks half okay. The rest of them, not so much, but I'm just going to throw them in here. <laughs> Why not, right? I'm basically trying to encourage you to experiment and try things. It doesn't hurt. Worst case, I wasted a little bit of time doesn't matter. It's fine. Isn't that what gardening's all about? Trying new things, experimenting. If things fail, you don't want to give up. You just want to try again. Cover these little guys up. And put the tag in on to the next one. Next up, we have the artichokes. 
I'm just reusing pots that I have from previous plants that I've bought. I am going to look on the internet, actually. I'm going to do a little research. I just want to make sure that was I supposed to soak these first. So if I find that I was supposed to soak them, I will take them out of here and I will soak them. And I will put an update on the screen if that is the case. I was going to overwinter them just in pots in my garage, and I chose not to. And perhaps that would have possibly been the right thing to do, but we'll see. Let's try this out, see what happens. Wondering. Yep, I was going to say, I wonder if I could put two in one pot. Why not? Let's do that. Make sure we cover those roots. Since I don't know if these are even going to do anything, I don't know which variety they are, I at least will put the labels in there that I have so I know that these are artichokes. I would love to hear from you if you've experimented with a plant and how it turned out, what plant it was, what did you do to experiment, and were you successful? I'd love to hear about it. All right, those are done. Let's move on to the next thing. Next, we're going to get the gladiolas sprouting. I'm going to start with two trays, but if I need more, I can grab more. If you did have something that was rotting, you would want to discard it. You would not want to add it into this mix here because it might spread to the other bulbs or corms or whatever you're trying to sprout. Put a small guy maybe. There we go. Definitely some pink ones. I have some red ones and yellow ones. The hummingbirds love the gladiolas. I'm going to top these off. I have a bunch of very small ones. I'm just going to put those with those little guys over there. Because they're clearly not going to bloom this year. They'll sprout. I mean, all of these will sprout. They just won't bloom. And the goal, again, is to keep them so that they do sprout, so they do grow leaves, so they do photosynthesize, so they do grow, get bigger. I really need like a special little nursery bed to be able to grow these on. I do have a nursery bed, but I'm using it for, it's a holding bed for perennials. But perhaps when I move out some perennials this spring, I might be able to put some of these little bulblets into that holding bed just for the summer and the fall. And then I would dig them out and store them again. But at least they should be able to put on some size. All of that takes a lot of effort. I get it. It's a lot of work, but I enjoy it. It does give me joy. I'm pretty sure that's how you people propagate their gladiolas. I mean, when you buy them in the store, they started this small and they got grown on to be this big.
All right, so put the tags in. And we will pot up the little bulblets next. These are the cutest little things once they start sprouting. I don't know why, but I just think they're adorable. And I'm going to do the same thing I did with, as with, a, with what I did with the other bulblets. I'm just going to place them in here in a big hodgepodge of a mess. Especially with the little guys, what I'll probably do is um, kind of start moving them out as soon as they show signs of life because maybe some of these might not survive and some might. So I will probably do that. I was going to put them all in one container, but I don't think that's a good idea. So let me go ahead and cover this and I'll put the rest of these in another container. It's definitely going to be cram quarters for their, these little bulblets. But survival of the fittest, that's what I have to say. They're in vermiculite and it's okay. I'm just gonna put them vermiculite in there as well. <laughs> it's definitely a tight fit. And I'm going to label that. And next, I'm going to show you the Dahlia tubers that I stored over the winter and how they're doing. This was my first year successfully storing Dahlia tubers in my garage. And I already pre-sprouted a bunch of them. And they're in my greenhouse. And these were ones that I pre-sprouted later in the season. You can see that quite a few of them have already started sprouting. So what I'm going to do with these is I'm going to actually put them in pots. Some of these containers do not have drainage holes in them. So I'm going to put them in pots that have drainage holes. I'm actually going to pull each of them out. I'm going to look at the tubers. And if I need to, I might just go ahead and try to divide some while I'm at it. But that's my plan for these tubers. Well, that took a while, but I got everything potted up and I gave it a little bit drink of water. So I put everything on my rolling cart. I keep moving stuff around. So everything that was on my rolling cart before has now been moved into greenhouses. On this cart are primarily tubers, bulbs, corms, things of those nature. So you can see, if you take a look, I have everything here. And the big thing is I don't want to water these too much. I don't want them to rot. So that's just something to keep in mind, especially if it's going to be a very rainy day. I'll make sure I don't bring this cart out. Please be sure to subscribe and like my channel. I want to show you the progress in all of these plants that we planted today. Until then, make it a great day with gardening.